Martin's third book of poetry, Crone, is due from Nix's Meat Books in 2018. Her second collection of poetry, Seek the Holy Dark, was the 2017 selection for the, the Louisiana series of Cajun and Creole poetry from Yellow Flag Press. She founded and edits the online poetry magazine, Mocking Heart Review, and lives in Louisiana with her husband and daughter. Please welcome Claire L. Martin. You have to give me a second, my foot fell asleep. <laughs> okay, I think I can make it. Okay. Can I have the little lectern just to set me oh, up? Stand oh, up? sure, I'm sorry. I was trying to be helpful there. <laughs> you are helpful. Yeah. Thank you. So where do you like it? But next yeah, just on the side. Awesome. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here. This has been, um, we set, you know, the wheels in motion months ago, and as the date got closer, just the excitement was building, and we know about the community here at Malvern and how people really cherish coming to hear poets read and writers read, fiction writers. And that's a thing that is, I see it here alive and well, but it's a thing we have to work towards all the time, building relationships with other poets. And, Meeting Robert in person for the first time after knowing him online for five years is a really wonderful thing, and I thank you for coming and being with us. It's awesome. So this book is um, my first book, Eating the Heart First, and it began in 2004 with the death of my son, and that is when I count the beginning of my writing journey. So the first poem I'm going to read is the first poem that came from the grief, although not all of the poems are autobiographical or deal with grief. Ice to water. The hospital room is cool. There are moths in your breath. Circled in ice, you're enwrapped in white fire. Coffee-colored urine drains in a bag. I swab your lips with lemon glycerin. Your pulse beeps loss. I buzz a nurse out of the void. I cannot watch you die. The doctor scowls at my cowardliness. Stunted from birth, plucked too early, you were wingless. It took me years to believe it wasn't my fault. You despaired in an infant's life. I choose blue for the burial, like the thunderhead in your eyes. The undertaker powders the fine hairs of your face, seals you in secret. And I have a daughter who is going to turn 23 in December, and this is a poem for her. Her name's Madeline. My son's name was Adam. To a daughter born in winter. This night in my arms, you look into my eyes with something I imagine is love. But daughter, I know it is hunger, hunger. I will keep this place for you, cover your wounds and heal you. The lullaby I sing is garbled in sobs. Everything becomes dust, even you, even me. You were born in winter, and winter holds you. Outside, the wind is spreading. Silver leaves fall like tattered letters that drift out of a mother's hands. This book was eight years. It took eight years to write and to get a publisher. And the day that I learned that it was going to be accepted was three days before Christmas in 2011 and I sat on my front steps and just cried out because it changed it changed my whole world to have that recognition and to be able to create something that hopefully will be a legacy for my family and for anyone who reads or hears me. Bone Woman 
These bones, thin as quills, lattices of bone crumble so easily. Bone song whistles in channels of marrow, a pendulum swings. Oh, metal bearer, mother, sad manipulator, I have come here to pray. Around us are holy trees, an ancestral graveyard 200 years old. There is a silence we rail against. There is a silence we reject. Let me be in those silences that humans keep forever. <clears throat> and um, I say I'm the gumbo queen, and um, there may be a plot a plot against me because there are others <laughs> that cl claim that title, so there could be a war afoot. But here's a <laughs> here's a, a Louisiana poem. Any winter Sunday in Louisiana, there is a woman who brews a hurricane in her bed, who makes love as the gumbo simmers. She is divine and divines that she is the circling cormorant that dives into marshlands and rivers, then soars, leaving snaking roads in their wake. Sweet cane burns against the rising moon. She roams with coy dogs at midnight and is witness to the last of the red wolves. The woman dances in the mud of the bayou with alligators, nutrias, and snakes. In the surf of the gulf, she scuttles a blue crab pinching toes of bathers and rides salt breezes, a gull's laugh on her back. And this is the most hopeful poem in this book, and then I'm gonna move on. Um, Do not let death catch you, or the ocean take you into spiraled caverns where no living thing sees light. Fill your lungs, rise from this, the darkest water. Let the wind carry you on ethereal bones. Be of the grass of dreaming birds. Be of the last unforgiving stone of the silent earth. Fire scatters your wish. Burning petals of ash drift to your cheek. Remember when your mind was keen when the hope which possessed you rose to the stars. And this book is Seek the Holy Dark. And this one was five years. And um, it's kind of funny because Bessie, who I met four years ago, um, I dedicate this book to her because I went over to her house one day and I was moping and depressed and mm. <laughs> and Bessie said, you need to write another damn book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I get credit. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I did. Here's a, a love poem. Come, a love poem. And it's after a photograph called Unclouded by a Baton Rouge photographer named Brian Biamonte. Come to me unburdened. Come from the troposphere of holy contentment. Free is how I will take you. A minuscule promise is all I have. Is it enough? I chase the sun from its peak to its dissolution. Skin myself to keep you warm love, lover, boundlessness, contained only by lips that grasp, release, grasp, release. I am like these clouds, open, still, waiting, to be undone by imminent rays. Between us there are no inches. Between us is only breath. I cannot know. Am I blind today? I woke up this way. Touch my brokenness with your miracle, with your spit and mud, and I shall be healed. As we are, 
We began in a fire of stars. Life drummed in our throat like a god's breath, and we became as we are. None can interpret our transcendent whisperings, our salvage secrets more real in surreality. O oh, body inhabitant, we wake and sleep a breath apart, lulled by the bloodbeat of conjoined hearts. What life shall we make, my same sister? Your eyes are full of terrible confessions, having cried the nothingness out. And I'll read one or two more from this one. And I think I share something with Robert that we've kind of gone back and forth that we both like the same kind of sparkling kava. And he mentioned kava in his poem. And every time it comes up, sometimes on Facebook, I'm thinking, I gotta go get a bottle, you know? <laughs> so we might have to pick up, go to a liquor store after this. <laughs> get some kava. Yeah, some sparkling oh. kava. The artist and his model. Moon rooted in wood, woman rooted in shadow, shadow drapes her nude figure. The light is as he wants. Her hands spread on her belly, her hands network to her spine. She arches her back, belly to the moon which wanes in the wood. Every muscle aches for the silent cue to release the pine. Her thoughts unravel. She gives one to the maestro with the sable brushes. He wipes her knee with cadmium in his excitement, close as breath, close enough to hear the tinny heartbeat tick away in his chest, or is it a wheeze? He mixes a cerulean eye, a small hammer beats behind her knee. He permits her to slump into pillows, a brush stroke grows wild. Something bubbles in her tummy. The child is a blood balloon. The baby's kick is a fresh fruit of kava. He tells her to breathe, to hold out her palm. In it he places a nectarine. And this last one from Seek the Holy Dark that I'll read is for the electrocuted owl. And if you permit me to tell a little story about it. Um, <clears throat> in my teenage days, I wanted to see a band and, um, you know, kind of wobbling back home, walking. And there was a um, friend of my boyfriend that was walking me home so that I would be safe. And there was a, a perfectly perfect large owl on the ground right below a um, power line and it, it was spread out. And so we both just stood there and stared at the owl. And that guy went on and did his life and I did my life. And some almost 30 years later, I see him in a grocery store and we both went, the owl. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote this poem for the electrocuted owl. We bend to blacktop to better see, to eye the majestic, and quivering with gravity, succumb to the helplessness. We must suffer when attacked by forces unnamed and unknown, compelling us to stay rooted, frozen, and so inescapably speak. O oh, glorious splayed in moon devotion, Night descends on silent wings, cream belly angel with black pearl eyes. Oh, wind blade, this dew is blood. This killing fire whistles in bone. You, lightless dead, lie in six streams, utterly gone. Mm -hmm. And this eight, five, and four to five months that it took me to write this one. And Bessie sparked the first poem that went into this too, so.
I'm just uh, wonderful, aren't I? She's awesome, <laughs> and you know, she's she's the headliner. That's the way I put it. You know, and the headline is what's the headline? <laughs> she she looks scared for a minute. <laughs> she's the queen of random. <laughs> yes. So. <clears throat> I'm turning 50 on November 8th, and this is my birthday party right now. <laughs> and so um, some of my women friends are older than me, and they've gone through a rite of passage to become the wise women, the crone, and the crone of mythology, and the crone, um, the wise woman who healed people. And so this, this is the theme of, um, and a character within this long poem and it is, um, there's two voices, there's the crone speaking, and when you look at the text, it's really for the page to see, it's italicized when the crone is speaking, and then it's um, not italicized when her apprentice is speaking. And so I'm gonna read just a few, and it won't make much sense because it is um, being read out of sequence. And this, this is the opening, blessing. Lavender in a bowl, a berry on the tongue, the kiss of a queen, shepherds dreaming of seas, bells at the hour of prayer, perfume evaporating and still a residue of oil on the inside of her wrist, ambergris and jasmine, a fig on the tree, chills in big middle night, Rose petals and blood in the palm of your hand, rain heavy wings, the last muscle to grasp from a ragged heart. And here's a little sketch of the apprentice speaking and describing, in a sense, something of the crone. She curls smoke with a knotted finger and three times draws a clockwise trail on the crown of my head. She salts my tongue. I breathe in minute sips. This will blind you so you will see. Fury erupts in the middlemost mind. A boy, light-haired, shines in a sky black as the mountain. A vulture plummets, annihilates him. I begin to speak it. She silences me. And I'll pick one more. And I'm just doing this very randomly, as you can tell. Because it was already out of sequence. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in a book form yet, but we have the cover and we have um, the blurbs and it's supposed to come out in December from Nix's Mate Books. And I'm very excited about that. And I have a business card if anyone wants to friend me on Facebook or go to my website and you'll find out more. And this is the poem that Bessie sparked and that at a women's writing retreat um, in the woods in Louisiana. Evil rins its tongue with gritted cries, blood on the bow, a tarot tear, ineffable with dreams, whispers across moss, on my knees to harvest a heart in white woods. One shot, one arrow pierces the doe that fed on apples by the gate, rain and detritus of winter. A coyote alone claws the mud. A stag sharpens venerable antlers on the cleaved breast of a 500-year oak. Hoof prints in snow and silver brass, black wet bark, blue wet boulders, heathen succubae haunt the rose, vulnerabilities of earth and burning rivers, daylit moon is a scar, hawks the sky, snowberries, the chalice and the chain, royal blood desiccated, strawberry crowns for the birds, death keeper of desire, her keen sense perturbs the physical world, Grind halos, albumen tongues, soft hoof beats, white horses flee, a merciless fog, oak, cedar, cypress, vultures, spiral, slag of gray clouds, candle wax sun, gold eye, a couple
cockroach pulses in her mouth, tomorrow's nowhere grave. A door resolves all that is pestilent. Thank you.